And we're joined now out of Canberra by Grog's Gamut, as he's known in the Twitter sphere, otherwise known as Greg Jericho there in the studio. Thanks very much for your company. No problems, Peter. Good to be here. First comment from me, just the, the, the absolute shock and disappointment that you don't look the same as your Twitter photo. I found out from you just during the break that the Twitter feed is actually um, Ralph Fiennes, is it? Yeah, it's a great disappointment to me as well that I don't look exactly <laughs> like Ray Fiennes at his, at his best during English Patient, but uh, I say that it, it was a photo that I picked ages ago probably. and I've just kept with it, so, you know. Oh, all right, let's, let's move on. The, the, uh, the Fifth Estate, that's the title of your book. Well, not the exact title, but it's about the rise of the Fifth Estate. What does that mean? Uh, and as somebody that makes a living in the Fourth Estate, what on earth should I be worried about? Well, I don't think you actually have to be worried about anything if you're good at your job, and I presume you think you are good at your job, well, and you I, I would disagree with it. <laughs> <laughs> I th it's, it's about the rise of the fifth estate I take as being not only just the blogs and people who are writing their own commentary and their own discussion on policy, but also uh, social media um, forums like um, Facebook and Twitter where we have this almost intersection or in some t sometimes a collision between the fourth estate and people who prior to the social media were just passive observers and readers and now there's an active aspect of that and I'm and so my book I guess looks at how that has affected the way journalists operate and how they've sort of coped I guess with that change from being a passive having a passive audience to now an active one. Well, as a journalism academic, I'd actually love to have a good read of your book. I only had the opportunity to flick through it because even though you did do the right thing and your publisher sent it to us, my producer basically stole it from me uh, because he was interested enough in the topic that he decided he wanted to have a read it. But he let me have a quick look at it before this interview, which was appreciated. Uh, one of the things that I'm interested in in particular is Twitter, uh, the chapter on Twitter and journalists embracing Twitter. It strikes me, and I'm on Twitter and, and I contribute to it. It's, the interesting thing about it, though, is don't journalists risk in to risk in terms of their traditional media, um, putting out all their thoughts out there on Twitter uh, rather than in print or, or talking about them like we are now on news and therefore they distribute them more widely and they use them up basically before using them in the traditional media sense. Well not necessarily, I mean you and I last November or December I think it was had a fairly good discussion on Twitter about an article you wrote and I took issue yeah, you with you know, some of the, the data you used. Yeah, I, I got stuck into you, and there were a couple others who did as well, and you, you know, there was some good back and forth quite, there. Quite and a few people defending me, if I recall. But anyway, sorry, go on. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, but as a result, I mean, you then on the weekend, you wrote a, essentially a, a good follow-up piece where you expanded on a bit of the debate and the points that you'd made. Now, it doesn't always have to be on Twitter journalists tweeting their, their next story. It can be a good discussion on, on things that they, they are ruminating over and that, that are issues are at play. And if there, there are some fairly intelligent people out there on Twitter who have got experience in policy areas, and a good journalist should actually be almost sucking in all that information and, and helping it to frame his or her future articles. Well, now, this may not... This, well, it may be in your book. I didn't get a chance to read it. My producer stole it, as I mentioned. But... Um, you mentioned in some of your public comments recently uh, that you think that Julia Gillard has been as harshly, if not more harshly, treated uh, than any other Prime Minister. Do you really think that that's the case? Uh, this is a question, actually, that came off Twitter. I asked for some comments there, and, and somebody basically asked me to sort of compare John Howard's treatment uh, to Julia Gillard's treatment. Yes, she's copped it, but, boy, he copped it as well, and he probably would have copped it even more uh, in this sort of new blogosphere Twitter environment we live in today, wouldn't he? Well, to be honest, I don't know if I've ever actually have said that Julia Gillard. <laughs> this is the gets problem with Twitter. This is the problem with Twitter. That was an online comment. The fifth yeah, estate is I mean, destroying I, I the fourth estate. I think she gets a certain tone of, of commentary, and, and but that purely comes because she's a woman, and so of course she's going to get a different type of criticism. That, to be honest, most women, including uh, women <coughs> journalists, get online that that male journalists don't get. Mm. Um, but I, you know, I. I don't think I've really bought in too much into the case of, you know, she's getting a great deal more than than others. Yeah, I, I certainly threw criticism at John Howe. The difference is that I, I th there wasn't any Twitter back then. I think if there was, there would have been a hell of a lot of, co um, you know, comments flying his way. And, but, you know, that doesn't mean just because, oh, you know, people were bad to John Howard, that excuses people being sexist or abusive towards Julie Gillard. We probably should try and aim for something a little bit higher. But yeah, no, I don't I think I've actually ever sort of said that. No, well, I agree with that about aiming higher. We're running out of time, but if I can ask this, 
should or does the fifth estate need the fourth estate? Does the Twitter sphere and the blogosphere and so forth need traditional journalism to survive and to thrive? Um, I don't know if it needs to thrive. I think if it really wants to thrive, it needs to look a bit further and, and look at issues that perhaps the fourth estate are missing. And a good, a good one is last week. Last week, while well, the fourth estate was primarily occupied with what Julie Gillard did 17 years ago, there was some fairly important cybercrime legislation that got passed that pretty much means you know, everything you do online and in SMS will be kept for two years. And that really didn't get a lot of a mention, but I did read a lot about it in blogs and in sort of new media sites and also on Twitter. And I think that's where there's some good scope for, for really good bloggers to, to find sort of the cracks that aren't getting filled by the traditional media and really provide some good information there. All right, Greg Jericho, we are out of time. What do you prefer, Greg Jericho or Grog's Gamut? I know a lot of people who I've met on Twitter who just call me Grogs and they call Grog and it used to be my uh, nickname so I'm kind of happy just to be called Grogs now. Alright, well we'll call you Grogs. Grogs, appreciate you joining us on Showdown. Thanks very much for your company. Good no luck with the book. Better. Good to be here.